Here we have Taliesin's boiler. It's in the workshops again um, uh, to have the overhaul completed. Um, we've uh, now finished welding in all the new stays, so the firebox has been completely restayed with a new design of um, stays, which is the major work that we envisaged to do. Um, so that's done. Uh, the boiler inspector has seen it. Um, so the next thing is to uh, fit the new tubes and the new superheater flues when they arrive. Um, and then we can uh, move to doing a hydraulic test on it. So the Taliesin's overhaul has commenced big time now. As I'm sure I've said before, they're TIG welded around the outside, just on the outside of the plate. Um, and then the telltale hole is welded over on the outside. Uh, the telltale hole goes right through the stay and it's open on the inside. So any leaks will be visible within the firebox. Any, so any broken stays will show up inside rather than under the cladding where it's very difficult to find out which one's leaking. I don't think we've ever seen one break on the inner firebox. I mean, it's possible. Um, but anyway, with this, you only have to look in the firebox where all the, the telltale holes are all open to the inner firebox. Um, and you can see straight away if any of them are leaking or have been leaking because you get a deposit around the stay. So it's much easier to detect if we've got a broken stay or a cracked stay and even worse if there are two stays together broken which is a stop the locomotive type scenario. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so this stay is uh, a much better design hopefully. Um, say we've done this on the David Lloyd George. Uh, the new boiler for the James Spooner has this design of stay and now Taliesin has this design of stay. Taliesin's power bogey is having a major overhaul. Um, it's never had a major uh, rebuild since it was built. Um, it did have the piston valve conversion done but there wasn't a lot of other mechanical work done at that time. Um, so we're taking the opportunity now to give it a full mechanical overhaul. Um, so as you can see, the wheels have been remachined on the profiles. Um, the crank pins have been removed, ready for new ones to be fitted. Um, the bogey frame itself has all been stripped down, all the mechanical parts are off. So these are the axle boxes. As you can see, they've been re-white metalled. So this white metal looks rough. That's because it's, it's newly been cast into place. And we've got it on the, the crown. And we've got white metal on the, the side faces where the axle box moves up and down in the horns. So all of these will need remachining um, to suit the axle diameters and the, the thrust clearances and to suit the, the horns which are over there. So the rods don't need a lot of work. Um, the piston valves there in the middle, um, they, need, they need new spindles. So if I come around here, this bit here where it runs in the gland uh, has worn down. So we're going to make new spindles, but keep the valve heads, new valve rings that will go in these grooves here. It's the rings that do the sealing, the rings and the, well, the oil on the rings does the ceiling. Um, these are the main 
piston rods and pistons. I think they're all right, but again, we're going to have new rings, just two on there. Um, yeah, say so the the rods, I think, uh, are fine. Um, and then there's the uh, mechanical lubricator over there, which again I'll get a clean and a check that it's working all right. Um, and uh, yeah, so all the parts have been measured up for wear. Um, but renewing the piston, the piston rings and the valve rings um, after 20 years is uh, that's, that's quite a reasonable life for um, piston and valve rings. Um, although it hasn't done a huge amount of mileage, not compared to a double engine. Um, double engines might get new piston rings and valve rings say maybe every 10 years or, or maybe less. This is the monoblock cylinder casting for the Taliesin. Um, so monoblock in that it's one casting all the way across whereas the original uh, fairly design had splits here and here so it was three pieces. Anyway we've We've got the monoblock design and we've got a piston valve here instead of the original slide valves. So those piston valve spindles we were looking at work up and down in here in these liners. Um, and then the main pistons obviously operate in there and in here. So this is a setting bar, this, and it's been set in the middle of the bore and it's been set in line with the bore so if we look further back you can see the bar coming out of the back and then this is being used to set up these slide bars exactly in line with the setting bar so you can imagine you know if any out of lineness of the slide bars will cause very poor running. So we need the piston to move up and down in the cylinder exactly in line with the bore. And the, the piston rod will be guided by the slide bars. So we set the slide bars exactly in line with the bore of the cylinder and then everything will run nice and smoothly. These are the horn gaps where the axle boxes operate. Obviously these wear plates have been measured accurately so that they're square and uh, any wear in them has been uh, taken out. I don't think there is much wear. Also these areas here have been polished up because this is where occasionally we find cracking off the corners of the horn blocks because the, the wheels are waggling the bogey about so the frame will flex in this area. Um, anyway, I don't think we've got any cracks here so that's a good thing. So, so this is a, a previous repair that's um, a crack was found up here so it's been uh, ground right through and then welded um, and then you can see that the weld has been, it's covered in dimples and that's because it's been peened with a hammer which means with a, the ball end of a hammer it's been, it's been hit. So that what that does, it puts a compressive stress into the surface of the metal. And because uh, any crack would start on the surface by a tearing if you can put a compressive stress into the metal, um, it's less likely to crack again. It's not a very, uh, it's not done technically, it's just basically bashed with, a, with the ball end of a hammer. So for the, for the effort it takes, if it stops a crack forming again, then it's well worthwhile. So yes, this is the um, new line side tool van. Um, which as you can see it's quite a large vehicle um, it's 
quite a lot longer than the DZ and B wagons that the, the bogies came from. Um, but uh, it's been specially designed to give the line side department what they need. So there's a there's a big van space with a sliding door on one side and a raised platform where they can stand on and um, as I say get the higher bits of line side vegetation that might be hanging down. So the underframe which is what you see here is all fabricated in mild steel um, but the bodywork will be fabricated in stainless steel so that um, we shouldn't have any corrosion problems in future. Um, the underframes tend not to corrode in the same way as the thinner upper bodies do. Um, so it's similar to a Welsh Island carriage in construction. Uh, yeah, so as I say, the guys are just painting it. That's the raised platform bit over there that you can see. Um, I'd say there'd be there's some steps up, and handrails, so that they can work safely at a, a higher level. And uh, it's going to run on South African bogies because we have a, a number of them in stock. So we're overhauling a pair of uh, cast steel bogies. And these are the some of the components that have been away and been shot blasted, and now they've been painted so this is a bogey side frame with built-in axle boxes here and here and then the springs work here those are the, the planks there and um, some springs there so as I say these these bogies came from South Africa they're very robust um, and they were available at a good price so we uh, We've got a good number of them and, and we have several of obviously under the the b wagons and the dz wagons that we use for coal ash and stuff like that um, so they're very useful acquisition and they come they came vacuum braked as well so it's very useful So these are the, the roof sticks for the line side tool van. Um, they're stainless steel hollow section. So they're readily available and we have to get them bent by a, an outside contractor, Barn Shores. And then they're notched at the ends here where they sit onto the cant rail that runs the length of the vehicle higher up. And obviously be welded in position. This is the new boiler for Bellin Heli, um, which is uh, now almost finished. Uh, as you can see, the stays are in. These are different stays, these are screwed stays, because welding inside the firebox um, is very difficult because it's so small, basically, um, you wouldn't be able to get in to do the weld. So they're screwed in, in place and then they're corked around, which is just about possible to, to do. Um, so the firebox is riveted at the foundation ring, screwed stays. Um, the other main seams are, are welded, uh, whereas obviously in an original Quarry Hunslet boiler that would be a, a lap seam that would be riveted. Um, but we've got the nice curved flanged back head and throat plate, a welded boiler barrel. Um, so 
basically the, the boiler is now complete, just a few finishing off bits and pieces to do. The mud hole doors to go in, obviously, and um, washout plugs to go in. Um, but then it'll be a, it'll need a, a hydraulic test approved by British Engineering Services. Um, and then it can be installed back into the loco, uh, which will give Bell in Heli a, a new lease of life for, for many years. Right, this is 2011. It's a Welsh Island service carriage. Um, you can see the generator there. Um, but that's not what we're working on at the moment. In, it's in here for a bogey overhaul. But the bogies are having some work done. And more importantly, the, the brake gear here is having some work done. So the, the vacuum cylinder, which is there, has been stripped down and is being overhauled. And also, we're doing some improvements to the, the way shaft arrangement. It was a South African bogey, um, a diamond frame bogey. So it's got these bars that form the, the side frames um, rather than the, the steel castings that were on the line side vehicle that we looked at earlier. Um, so we've modified it uh, to be more suitable for the Welsh Island carriages. Um, we've got the, the weight is now all on the side bearers. Um, we've done a roller bearing conversion on the axle boxes so they're quite different extra boxes. The other thing we've done is added these flange lubrication stick holders. Um, so there's a spring at this end held by a pin, which is pushing a lubricating stick into the flange root radius of the wheel. So as the vehicle goes along, the stick rubs in this area on the Plunge, and it's the area that would wear most um, in service round all the sharp curves that it's got to go. So as the stick is rubbing on here, it basically coats the area with a, a soya-based lubricant. Um, so it hopefully stops any squealing, um, but also, more importantly, it stops the wheel wearing away, uh, or the wheel flange wearing away in this area, um, which is, used to cost us a lot of time and money in uh, building up this area with weld and then reprofiling it. Um, so not all the vehicles have stick holders on, but quite a few do now. Um, so what happens is that the, uh, the lubricant gets spread around the wheel and then it gets deposited on the railway, on the flange edge of the rails. And uh, so in the height of the season, the whole railway will be quite well lubricated by these sticks. Um, so uh, they're very useful and very important on a, a you know, a 40 mile railway with lots of curves. Uh, flange wear used to be a significant problem, um, but now it's, uh, it's quite under control with these lubricators. Right, this is the Linda. As you can see, it's pretty much all now back together after a, a long overhaul. The boiler inspector came the other day to do a final hydraulic test on the boiler, which will start the 10-year clock ticking. The, um, uh, so shortly we're going to give it a steam test uh, and do a bit of running around. So this is a temporary adjustable link. So it's got left and right hand thread and lock nuts there. So if you undo the lock nuts and turn this hexagon, you can make this link either shorter or longer, which will move the position of the valve relative to the rest of the valve gear. So that's very useful for setting because 
Otherwise, in the old days, it was done by putting shims either one side or the other of the valve. Yes, so here we are in the Linda's cab, the, uh, the new bunker and water tank is uh, there in the tender so there's a new water tank underneath and a new bunker arrangement um, which hopefully will prove better than the old one well I mean the old one uh, leaked rather which is which is why we were forced to uh, to rebuild it um, there's a toolbox at the back which we were just talking about, the, all the useful things you can find in the locomotive toolboxes. Um, the water filler is now here, so that's where you fill the tender tank through. It's been moved to there. Um, and there'll be a couple of seats here and room for oil cans and things underneath. Okay, so the, the arrangement in the cab hasn't changed. Um, we've still got uh, injector steam valves, the ejector over there, reverser there, the ram's bottom safety valves still in place, the shroud is yet to be fitted. Um, the back head cladding has been uh, heavily repaired or replaced and that, that's yet to go on. So this is the bare back head at the moment, but there'll be a the brass curvy bit around there will go on and the steel bit in the middle. And the fire old door is yet to go go on, that's down there. So yeah, so not a lot left to do um, before we'll see the Linda out again, running around. Um, and uh, maybe maybe in service at Christmas. Uh, not, not sure. Right here we've got the the horn blocks for the Yo and the X locomotives. They're um, uh, basically similar to the lead locomotive. They're Linden Barnstable Railway 262 tank engines. Um, so we've been contracted by the Linden Barnstable Railway to um, machine up the new castings that uh, they've had cast for these so as you can see this this face here has been machined and the face on the other side has been machined on the the boring machine here um, that's just the first phase of machining the, um, the important bits are the side faces here where the axle boxes will work up and down and then to go with them we've got to make the horn stay at the bottom which is basically a, a flat piece of plate slotted to receive the the horn the horn block sides um, and then there'll be a series of holes round here where this is bolted up to the frame when it's finished uh, a hole in the top for the spring pillar where the spring will push down on the axle box so that's taking up a fair bit of effort at the moment in the machine shop um, and the other thing we've got here is uh, similarly for the yo and the x the the axle box castings themselves which will um, work in the horn blocks um, as you can see the, the castings have been faced off at the bottom to form a, a datum so there'll be lots of machining to do on, on here uh, and finally there'll be, there'll be white metalled where the axle journal bears and then machines to fit the axle nicely so there's quite a lot of work to do there and then um, also with the axle boxes go come the axle box keeps and that's there's one here so this will be machined and fits into the bottom of the axle box and in here will be a sprung oiler pad which will bear against the bottom of the axle journal and it'll keep the the journal lubricated 
um, which is obviously vital. So anyway, they're uh, big, expensive aluminium bronze castings that we're machining up at the moment, um, ready for the for the new locos. Here we've got the diesel engine from the Cricket Castle, or at least the bottom end of the diesel engine from the Cricket Castle. Um, it's obviously having a, a major overhaul. Uh, it's never, never had any attention in all the years since it's been built, so it's definitely due some attention. So um, you can see the, the bores of the engine here. We've, we've had a contractor in, a specialist contractor, who's fitted new liners to to these. So he uh, bought in a boring machine and bored out this area by several millimetres right down to the bottom of the liner. Um, and then he pressed in new liners in each. So this bit of the job is done. Um, then next we'll need to uh, get new pistons and rings and fit those. Um, and there'll be lots of other bits to get to basically give the engine a complete rebuild so it's as, as good as new, um, which is what it needs. So the, the transmission, which attaches to the flywheel here, um, transmission will sit here. Uh, that's been away and been checked and found to be good. Um, so when all this work's done, we'll have a, a locomotive that uh, should work well and be almost as good as new again. Right, this is the new diesel loco we bought from uh, the Adrian Shooters Beaches Railway sale. Um, it's been in traffic for quite a while now with the S&T department and proved very useful. Um, it's uh, not received its uh, new nameplates yet, as you can see, but uh, they're on order. Um, and uh, it's come down here uh, for a few minor defects to be rectified, uh, which is why the, the, this bit of cover has been removed. Um, there's a slight leak on the fuel tank here, so uh, we're going to replace the fuel tank. Um, there's a few other jobs like the uh, door catches were troublesome, so we've got some new door catches. Um, but uh, otherwise, the locos proved uh, quite reliable, and um, yeah, it's a good addition to the fleet. Uh, not the prettiest looking engine, um, but it's uh, reliable um, and uh, reasonably powerful and fast enough. So it's uh, yeah, a good, a useful works diesel. Right here in the loco shed, we've got. Uh, a new James Spooner there, um, Hugh Napier, Blanche, Britomart, they're all uh, available for traffic and the, uh, the Merlin Emerys is at the moment, although the Merlin Emerys is going to come into the works uh, once the Linda's done for some mechanical attention. Um, just needs a, a winter overhaul. Um, the Welsh Pony isn't in here at the moment, that's because we, we, we're not um, we're not able to work on that at the moment, we need some more space. Um, but as you may know, it suffered a, a loose crank pin on, uh, on the driving axle. So basically, uh, somebody was watching it moving around and noticed that the pin was turning in the wheel. Um, so that's uh, obviously not good. Uh, the fit has obviously come uh, loose for some reason. So we need to diagnose that now, um, and we can't really do that without getting the loco in, lifting it up off its wheel sets and having a good look to see what's gone on. Um, it may be that the, the fit wasn't good enough in the first place and we can make a new crank pin, fit that 
and that'll be fine. Or maybe uh, th there's a crack in the wheel, um, so we'll have to think what to do then because um, you know we we might have to replace a, a wheel, uh, which we don't want to. But um, anyway, it, uh, at the moment that's uh, all just supposition uh we need to get it in and inspect it but at the moment we don't have time to do that we've uh, as you see the workshops are pretty much full and everybody's busy on jobs so but hopefully towards the end of the winter um we'll we'll be able to get welsh pony in and see just what's gone on with the crank pin